Hello, my name is Brian Kinney, and I'm a Striven ERP advisor, and welcome to our accounting lesson, where we will be discussing accounts receivable. Topics today will include AR settings, sales receipts, invoices and payments, credit memos, and AR reporting. So with that, let's get started. Before we get too involved in creating a accounts receivable transactions, let's first configure our AR settings. And to do that, click the Company tab and choose Settings from the drop-down. Next, choose the Accounting section, click AR, followed by Settings. This will bring you to the AR settings, and here we have several options, which we can toggle on or off to best configure our accounts receivable to fit our company's needs. At the very top in the General section, we can choose whether or not we want to require the bill to and ship to addresses for accounts receivable things like orders, invoices, credit memos, and sales receipts. If we want to require bill, the bill to and ship to to be present on all of these entities, we can choose to toggle the box on. If we do not want them to be required, we can simply untoggle the box. We can also choose whether we want to show cost and markup for line items. And if we would like to do so, we can keep this box checked on. And if we do not, we can to toggle it off. We can also choose whether we want to show our profit in our subtotals or not. And if we would not like to show that, simply untoggle the, the appropriate checkbox. In the sales order section, we can choose whether we want to auto expire recurring orders. We can also set lead time generation for invoices and enter the amount of days that we want lead time to occur here. Lead time here will auto generate invoices ahead of time as long as the days entered fits the chosen criteria. In the invoices section, you can choose the next number in which the invoices in the sequence of invoices. If you'd like to change the number, simply erase the number found here and enter the new number. You also have the from email and from name, and this is used for automatic notifications sent from the system related to your accounts receivable. And by default, this is the information for the user who created your Striven system, but if you would like to change this, simply enter the new email and from name in the appropriate fields. You can also associate the category in which the employee is associated, and you can choose the category from the drop-down below. Next, you can associate your default payment terms for invoices. To change your payment term, simply click on the field and choose the payment term from below. You also have a plus option to add a new payment term by clicking the plus icon and enter, entering the appropriate information, such as the term name, the term days, and then you can decide whether it's your default payment term. And when you're ready, simply click the Save button. Next, you can choose the default printable format for your invoices. And to, ch to choose the appropriate format, click on the field and choose the format from down below. Next, you can choose whether you want to automatically generate invoice PDFs once a day. And if you'd like to do so, you can toggle the checkbox on. And if you would not like to do so, then untoggle the checkbox. If you toggle the checkbox on, you will then be asked to choose the email in which the notifications are received, and this email will receive the PDFs so they can download and print on their local printer as needed. Next, you can choose whether or not you want to set invoices to be printed if the customer has selected to be on auto pay or not. You can also choose whether you want to ignore lead time if sales orders are on auto pay, and if you want to ignore lead time if invoices are not set to be printed. Next you have the credit memo section. Here you can choose the next number in the credit memo sequence and also determine if you want to automatically apply open credits to the oldest open invoices. And if you would like that workflow to occur, you can toggle the box on. If you would not, you can untoggle the box appropriately. In the sales receipt section, you can choose the next reference number for your sales receipt sequence. You can do the same for the payment section. You can choose the next number here, and you can also choose whether or not you want to send an invoice auto pay receipt once a payment is received from a customer. You can also choose when you want to process your auto pay, whether it's based on the due date or the invoice date, and to change that, simply toggle the appropriate radio button. 
just like credit memos, you can also choose whether or not you want to process auto pay on accounts with open credits and open payments by toggling the box. And you can also choose whether or not you want to automatically apply open payments to, to the oldest open invoices. If you would like someone to receive notifications when a failed payment is made, you can simply click on the box and choose an employee from the drop down. The employee entered here will receive notifications once a failed payment is made. And finally, you have the finance charges section. Here you can reference your annual rate that you charge in a percentage form for finance charges, associate an item to those finance charges, and the minimum amount that you issue finance charges for. Once you've configured your AR settings, simply click the Save button to save all your changes. Now that we've configured our AR settings, let's begin adding transactions. It is important to note before we begin doing so, however, where to find all your transactions in your Sturvin system. And those can be found by clicking Accounting and choosing Transactions from the drop-down. This will bring you to the Transactions list. And here, you can see all of the transaction types and filter down to find only the transactions that you're looking for. You can also filter by the transaction number, the date range, the memo on the transaction, the customer and vendor, and much more information as well. If you would like to expand or collapse these search filters, simply click the blue down arrow. The transactions list will list numerous amounts of information about each transaction, including the type of transaction on the left, followed by the transaction number, which is clickable. And if you click the transaction number, you'll be brought into the individual transaction to see all the details within. You also have the date and the due date displayed, the customer and vendor, which is also a hyperlink. And if you click the customer and vendor name, you'll be brought into their information to manage things related to the customer and vendor, ranging from contacts, their AR or AP, tasks, and much more. You also have the memo for each transaction, followed by the amount and how much is open from the original amount. It is also important to note that you have import functions located on the transactions list. And here you can import bills, invoices, payments, or journal entries. Now let's begin adding a accounts receivable transactions and see how each one functions. First, let's start with an invoice. There are three ways in which you can add a new invoice. One way is to click the Customers tab and choose Invoice from the drop-down underneath Financial section. This will bring you to the Add Invoice page in which you can choose your customer, reference a bill to ship to, add in all the transaction details ranging from the payment terms to the date and due date and also all the items that you're going to charge the customer for. You can also add a new invoice by clicking the Create tool, otherwise known as the plus icon, and choose Invoice underneath the Customers section. This will also bring you into the Add Invoice page. The third way to create an invoice is from a sales order. And from a sales order, you can click the Actions tab and choose Invoice. Sales orders can also be invoiced automatically upon approval or completion. And to learn more information about invoice generation from sales orders, you can reference our sales order management video, which will walk you through sales order types and how you can configure automatic invoice generation there. When adding an invoice, you can choose a customer from the drop-down. You can also type ahead to find the appropriate customer as well. A upon selecting the customer from the drop-down, their location will populate in the Bill to and Ship to section. If you would like to change the location, click the field and choose the appropriate location from the drop-down. You can also choose to update the default Bill to Ship to right from here as well by toggling the box on. We also have tracking information, which you can use on your invoice. If you click the tracking information hyperlink, you can choose to capture the ship via and also add a tracking number right from here. The ship via is a list of all your shipping methods in your Striven system. The sales rep, by default, is whoever is adding the invoice, but you can erase the name of this employee and choose the appropriate employee from the drop-down to be the sales rep on the invoice. On the right hand side, you can choose the date and due date. By default, the date is when you're adding the invoice, but you can change that by clicking the calendar icon and choosing the appropriate date from the drop down. 
If you want to change the payment terms, click on the field and choose the appropriate payment terms from the dropdown. This will automatically change the due date based on the date selected here. The invoice number will default to the next number available in the sequence, but if you want to change this, you can simply erase the number and add a new one. If there's an open sales order that you'd like to attach the invoice to, you can click the field and choose the number from below. If you have more than one accounts receivable account, you can erase the, the account if it's going to be different and choose the appropriate accounts receivable account from your list of chart of accounts. Below you can choose your invoice printable format and add a memo for the transaction as well. Down below you can begin adding the items you want to charge the customer for. By clicking the select field, you can choose from your list of items. If you've chosen a, an inventory or a manufactured item, click the select button that shows up below and choose where you want to extract inventory from. The description from the item will pre-populate upon adding the item if there's a description added at the item info level. You can also change your quantities and if you've chosen to show your cost and markup, they will appear in the appropriate fields here. You can also change your unit price and add any shipping and handling costs that you'd like to charge the customer for. If the item is taxable, then the tax option will be toggled on by default, but if you'd like to remove it, simply untoggle the box. If you're tracking your financial classes, click the select field and choose the appropriate class from the dropdown. If you're tracking profit in your subtotal calculation, you'll see the profit here and how much you stand to make on the invoice. Once you're ready, click the Save button below, and a pop-up window will appear in which you can choose to send an email to the customer, and the customer contact will be chosen by default. If you would like to edit the subject of this email, click the Edit Subject field, and you can change the subject line appropriately. Likewise, if you'd like to edit the content of the email, click the edit button below, and here you can change the content of the email. Please note that all of the merge fields will populate information appropriately, and if you click preview, you'll see that information populate accordingly. When you're ready, click the send button to send off an email, or close to close back to the invoice. Once saved, the invoice will be a live transaction, and here we have several transaction tools we can use to our benefit. One of the transaction tools is Related To. The Related To tab will show anything related to the transaction, and in this case it's a sales order. We can also choose to share the transaction, view the audit log to see changes made to the transaction. We can add or view attachments, see applied credits and payments, send an email, print off a PDF of the invoice, and we also have an Actions tab. And the Actions tab will allow you to receive a payment against the invoice, issue a credit memo, apply a pre-existing credit memo, copy the invoice, or void the invoice. There are also two very helpful accounting buttons here, which are the Posting Journal. This will show you debits and credits on the transaction to make sure everything's acting appropriately. You also have the History tab, and this will show any changes and when the changes were made and who made the changes as well. Any change made will be highlighted in orange so that it's very easy to see the changes and when they were made. There's even a helpful button to return to the invoice. If you would like to receive a payment against the invoice, click the Actions button and click Receive Payment. This will bring you to the Add Payment Info screen, and here the customer will be locked since you're adding the payment for the customer from the invoice. You can also choose how you receive the payment, who you receive the payment from, when you receive the payment, and how much the payment was for, and down below you can add a reference number for the transaction as well. Once you're ready to add the payment, scroll down and click Save. This will save the payment and also show how much payment is remaining if you've applied it to the, to the invoice. The payment will also have all the transaction tools that we saw before, including the related to, and this will show the invoice that you've received the payment against. You can also view the history, the posting journal, add a memo for the payment, 
Add or View Attachments, see Applied Payments, and here you'll see the invoice you've applied it to. There's also an option to unapply the payment. In the Actions menu, we'll allow you to apply the remaining balance to open invoices related to the customer and also void the payment. Apart from receiving a payment against an invoice, you can also add a payment by clicking the Customers tab and choosing Payments from the drop-down underneath the Financial section. Here you'll be brought to the Add Payment Info page, but since you're adding a payment from scratch, here you can choose the customer in which you're receiving the payment for, from. If there are any open transactions related to the customer, they will appear on the right-hand side of the Payment Info screen, and here you can see the total amount as well as the open balance. Next, you can choose the payment method in which you're receiving the payment from the customer, as well as the contact who is paying you. You can also choose the payment date in which you're receiving the payment, enter the amount of the payment itself, as well as the reference number. If you'd like to add any notes about the payment, you can enter that here, and if you have more than one account's receivable account, you can reference the, account, the appropriate account by erasing the name and choosing the appropriate account's receivable account below. Once you're ready, click the Save button and the payment will be saved. If there are any open transactions and you would like to apply them, you can do so with the pop-up that is displayed after saving the payment. Simply toggle on the transaction, which will highlight in green, and here you can adjust the amount you'd like to apply. By default, this is the full amount of the payment but you, if you would like to change that, simply add the new payment amount in the box to reference how much you would like to apply to the transaction. This will change the payment remaining, which we can see below. Once you're ready, simply click Apply Payment, and the payment will adjust to show the payment amount, how much payment was used, as well as the payment remaining. We can see what we applied the payment to by clicking the Applied Payments button and here we can choose to unapply payment as we saw before. Another transaction we can add in Striven is a sales receipt. To add a sales receipt, click the Customers tab and choose Sales Receipt underneath the Financial section. This will bring you to the Add Sales Receipt page. And here we can choose the customer in which we sold goods or services to. We can choose the payment method in which they paid change the reference number if we need to, and also when the transaction occurred. A sales receipt is referencing a sale. Think of it like adding an invoice and a payment at the exact same time. Here we can enter a memo for the sales receipt, note whether it's to be printed or not, and also set a recurrence if we need to as well. Down below we can add the item in which the customer has purchased, And here we can adjust the quantity that they've purchased and what price we sold them the goods for. We can also choose our financial class. And down below, when we're ready to save, click the Save button. And now it's become a live transaction and we can see all the transaction tools up above. By clicking the Actions tool, we can copy the sales receipt and also void the sales receipt if we have permissions to do so. Whenever you see the button, Add Unbilled Items. This will allow you to add any time or expenses that have been marked billable that you have not billed the client yet, and you can add them on transactions such as invoices and sales receipts. Apart from quickly creating payments and sales receipts from the Customer tab, you can also add them by clicking the Create button, otherwise known as the Plus tool, and choosing either Sales Receipt or Payment underneath the Customer section. Let's use this method to create a new credit memo. As we saw on an invoice, you can create a credit memo from an invoice by clicking the Actions menu, but you can also add a credit memo by itself as well. To do so, add a customer in which you're issuing a credit to. Here you can reference the date in which the credit was issued, change the credit memo number, reference an open order for the customer, change your account's receivable account, add a memo, and also set your occurrence as needed. Down below you can add the item in which you're crediting the customer for. We can also add a description for the line item and choose the inventory location 
where the item is stocked. Next, we can choose how much quantity we're going to credit them for and the price. Here we can choose our financial class if we're tracking classes. Also determine whether this is taxable or not. And also refund any shipping and handling that has been charged as well. When you're ready, click the Save button. And this will demonstrate three ways in which you can issue the credit to the customer. One method is to apply the credit memo to any open invoices related to the customer. The other option is to give a refund, and this will automatically create a refund check in which we can print off and mail to our customer. And next is to keep as an open credit. Think of this like issuing store credit. If the customer ever buys anything from you in the future, you can later apply that open credit to the next invoice. Let's choose Give a Refund and explore how to issue a refund check. Upon clicking the Give a Refund button, you can configure how the refund is given to the customer. First, choose how you're going to issue the refund. You can choose ACH, cash, check, or wire, and this is based on the payment methods that you have in your AR. Next, you can choose the bank account in which you're going to pay from. This will note the ending balance below the account field. You can also choose how much you're going to refund, and this will default to the amount on the credit memo. You can choose when the check is created, as well as the financial class you're associating here. If you'd like to enter a memo, you can type it in the memo field, and you can also determine whether it's to be printed later or not. When you're ready, click Save and Close, and this will automatically create a refund check in your system. If you would like to view the refund check, you can do that one of two ways. One is from the credit memo itself. Simply click the Related To button, and here you'll see the refund check. You can click the hyperlink, and this will take you to the refund check to see all the information about the refund issued to the customer. You can also find the refund check on the transactions list. Click Accounting and Transactions from the drop-down. To quickly find refund checks, choose the type field, uncheck all, and click Checks Refund. Upon clicking Search, you'll be able to see all the refund checks issued in your Striven system, and the top one will be the most recent transaction you've issued. And we can also click on the transaction number to see all the details there within. There are also reporting tools for your accounts receivable, and we can find those underneath the Reports tab. Let's view AR by customer first. AR by customer will list all the customers and pertinent information about each customer, such as the primary phone number, the status, whether they're prospective or active, the credit limit if they have one, their open balance, their collections log, the next follow-up date, and their last collections notice. There are also numerous search filters, including the customer name, the customer status, the days they're overdue for their payments, and if you click the blue down arrow, you can expand search filters, and here you can filter for a customer category, an assignment category, as well as their primary assignment. You can also filter for customers whose balance is greater than their credit limit. Hyperlinks here include the customer name to view the customer information. The open balance will view will allow you to view all the transactions that make up their open balance. The collections log hyperlink will bring up the AR log where you can enter statuses about their collections, as well as the next call date in which you can choose when you'd like to follow up with the customer. This is a great report to pair with your collections. And to find out more about collections, please reference our collections video as well. Another helpful report is the AR aging report. The AR aging shows all your customers, as well as their open balances, which are separated into buckets for how much they're past overdue. Each bucket displays a hyperlink, and if you click on the numeric value, this will show all the transactions that make up their balance. Search filters here include an as of date, intervals, and the bucket days. You can filter by customer, and if you click the blue down arrow, you can also filter by customer category and a financial class in which the transactions are associated to. There's also an export field function, which can be found underneath the gray down arrow located to the right of the magnifying glass. And here you can export to a CSV file. 
All of these tools will help you configure your accounts receivable in Striven, and you'll be well on your way to creating invoices, sales receipts, credit memos, and payments all in your Striven system.